Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me for my first live video for Ditto Remote Coaching Services. Today, we're going to be going over uh, a parent's guide to verbal behavior. And I was hoping I'd be able to show you guys my slideshow, but um, I'm seeing that I can only show either my face or the slideshow. And just to let you guys know, it's a day out of school. So my four-year-old's here, probably going to hear a little hollering, a little asking for mama, and, you know, the joys of being a mother. So I know everybody knows the feeling. Uh, so first... Um, I've, first, I'd like to say that I put on the Facebook page a link to the PowerPoint that I'll be using today to talk to you guys Mommy, on. Mommy, be quiet! Uh, he's upset with me because he's watching Wreck-It Ralph. I apologize. Well, well, uh, so, the PowerPoint slide is available on my Facebook page. Next time, I will just go straight to the PowerPoint and you guys won't see my face. So we'll see how that all works out. So today, I'm going over a parent's guide to verbal behavior. So what is verbal behavior? Well, it's kind of what I'm doing now. I'm talking to you guys. Um, it's a communication language skills. Verbal behavior was first um, defined by B.F. Skinner. Um, and I've also, if you guys are curious, in my helpful links, there is an interview with um, B.F. Skinner that goes over in detail verbal behavior. Um, verbal behavior also includes things called verbal operants, and those are types of responses that you can uh, elicit from a child. So we have a man, a tat, an echoic, uh, introverbal, textual, uh, textual, and transcript, and I also included listener response. So you guys are probably curious as to why I started with verbal behavior. So when my son first started at ABA, I walked into the clinic and his therapist had all these like shiny clickers hanging off her hip and I was like, okay, what's this about? She also came up to me and said, oh, he is independently manding this many times. He's tacting this many things. He's doing this and this. And I went home like, okay, I guess I know some of those words, uh, but that was about it. I didn't understand what they meant when they told me my son was manding or that he was tacting. So I wanted to help out parents to understand if they go to their, their clinic and their therapist says, he's manding today or she's manding this many times to let you guys know what that is. And this is my little boy. Can you say hi, Brendan? Hi. Okay. Now go watch Rick it Ralph, sir. So let's get to it. Hi. Oh, thank you, Brendan. A mand. What is a mand? So it's essentially a request. Hi. <laughs> um, so it can be verbal. It could be pointing at something. It could be sign language. It could be using a picture, or even when you're a baby and you, they're crying, you know they want milk. That can be a man as well. Uh, so an example of a man would be, so let's say my son comes over to me and says, Mommy, I want a cookie. And he wants a cookie, so I give him the cookie. That is an example of a man. A man is always something that the kid or person wants to. So what's next? We'll talk about a tact. A tact is essentially labeling something. Um, it's something you can label in your environment by either sight, by sound, smell, and touch. So you essentially use all five of your senses for a tact. So an example of that would be a child sees an airplane and they point up and go, airplane! So they're labeling an airplane. Oh, another way you can think of it is 
say you put a bag of popcorn in your microwave and then you take a big sniff and it, oh, that's popcorn. You've just tacted popcorn by smell or you hear it popping and you know that sound means that's popcorn. So you've tacted it by sound. The next verbal operant that I'd like to talk to you guys about is an echoic. So an echoic is pretty much what it sounds like. It's an echo. So you repeat a word or a phrase and your child or whoever says it back to you. So an example would be, say boy, and your child would say boy back to you. So it could also be a phrase. It can be um, as simple as a sentence. It could be a sound. Say ooh. Say la. So an echoic is just repeating the sound or phrase back to you. <clears throat> Next is an interverbal. An interverbal is a conversation. Um, so it's just... It's not, some, it's not similar to an echoic where it would be the exact same thing you're saying back to a person. This would be you're expecting a different response from your child or somebody else. So an example would be, what's your name? And then I would say, oh, my name's Brittany. Or you could do something like uh, twinkle, twinkle, little. And then the child would say star. Uh, a lot of times that's referred to as an introverbal fill-in. So you're expecting them to finish your phrase. There's also textual and transcriptions. Um, on my slideshow, you guys will see that I put the two together. And I did that intentionally. Um, a textual prompt, or excuse me, a textual operant is literally the you see the words and then you respond to it. So if I if I showed you this popcorn, you would say popcorn back to me. And can you tell that one of my favorite things in the world is popcorn? So that's a textual. I put on here that you would read, Hi, my name is Brittany. So you're expecting the person to read the card or read the text and respond back to you. A transcription is kind of the opposite. I put them together because it's both, writ it's both written language. Um, transcription is writing what you hear. So a great example of that is when you're in class, you take notes. You write down what you hear. Um, it's also referred to as dictation. So it's that one's pretty front and, and easy. Uh, the next one I'd like to talk to you guys about, this one technically, when you look at the, uh, the Applied Behavioral Analysis book, doesn't technically fall under the verbal operance section. But we use it a lot, and it's part of communication. Um, it's called listener response. Uh, so what this is is giving an instruction. So an in so that could be saying to somebody, "Touch your head," and then they touch their head, or say, "Show." Um, you could tell them to show me something out of a few different things, or bring this to me. So it's a couple different things like show me stomping and your child would stomp. Show me clapping and the child would clap. So it is an instruction. It can be a single step or it could be multi-step. So if you guys wanted to on my... I also included a couple of different for you to try at home. And I gave you guys some scenarios in the PowerPoint. And the first scenario is your son is pointing at a toy car and says car. He doesn't want to play with the car. So what kind of verbal operant would this be? And since we don't have anybody watching currently, which is fine, uh, the answer would be attacked because he is just labeling the car. 
The next one, the scenario I have, is your daughter is hungry and wants a snack. She comes to you and says, milk. So what type of verbal operant would this be? Well, she obviously wants something from you. So this would be an example of a man. She is requesting milk. So, also, so like I stated before, I did give or I'll leave, leave some, um, some good links for you. What I'll do is I will actually add these links to the comments right now. There are some great videos for you guys to watch if you want to. Um, the BF Skinner one, you know, it's not really something that I would expect most parents to watch. But if you want to come into your kid's ABA session and show off, you're like, I know about B.S. Skinner and how when he developed ver verbal behavior and have a good understanding of it, that would be a fun one to watch. Um, the other two videos I included were just a, more examples, apologize, uh, of how verbal operants are explained. And I also included an additional manding one. So that is my training for today. I like to keep it short, simple, and sweet. Um, I'll be open to any questions. And if you guys want, um, if you like my video, share it. And hopefully I gave you guys some information so when you guys go into your next session, you won't feel like I did and go home thinking, if you can't tell, he's excited about wreck it Ralph. I apologize. But you'll go home and not feel so stressed out about what did they just say to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time for our next session. Take care.